everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing really well. I'm going to be talking about my best and worst luxury purchases since I've started collecting luxury items. So I thought I would share with you some of the items that worked for me and some of them that didn't quite work. I thought this could be a video that could possibly help somebody. I don't know. I basically just go through a quick review of why I don't like it or why I love the item and we'll get straight into it. I thought I would start with handbags because handbags are my favorite item. So it was only fitting that I started with handbags. So I'm going to start with one of my best luxury handbag purchases ever. And it is this bag here. This is called the Gucci Marmot mini bag. It is the smaller size of the two that come in this style and I love it. I love it so much. It's a beautiful soft leather that has worn so nicely over time and it's just a color that goes with everything. I love that it's got the GG in gold here but you can also go a little bit more understated and go with just the all black and it's still got the GG logo there as well. And I love that the inside is a nice microfiber lining and it's still in perfect condition since I got it. This bag is about two years old now and I got it for my birthday two years ago, I believe, and I'm just so happy with it. I wasn't intending to buy this bag. I had another bag that I was going into Gucci to purchase, and I saw this, and I thought, this is what's been missing from my collection, a crossbody black small handbag, and it's been so perfect. I literally grab this bag like every second day because it's so easy to match, and it fits all my essentials, and I just, I really like it, and I really like the shape of it. I didn't like the bigger size because it was more longer. I do like the square shape of this. In terms of cost per wear, this is probably one of the best purchases I've done in terms of cost per wear. The only thing that I don't love about it is the strap is slightly longer and it's not adjustable, but it works for me fine. I just wish that I had the option to adjust the strap, but love this bag and it was a great great purchase for me. Now I'm going to do a worse purchase and it's sticking with Gucci too. And it is the Gucci Marmont Velvet Shoulder Bag. I got this at the same time as my camera bag. And I've just never really worn it. I've worn it a few times. I do wish I'd gotten in the smaller size. I think it's the color. I really think it's the color that didn't work for me. I loved it initially. So what had happened was I had seen the teal, but they couldn't sell it to me because it was for somebody else. And I was like, I love the velvet look and I really want that for my birthday. So she was like, okay, I can order you in. Which color do you want? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for this color because I feel like that color would work better in my wardrobe. It really hasn't. I think I've worn this bag like three times max. So I am considering selling it, but I do, I'm always nervous to part with my bags. And it is a beautiful bag. Like, I love to look at it. I think it looks really nice. It just doesn't work for me because of the color, I think. And the material is just a little bit more delicate where I have to look after it a little bit better. And I leave this bag in its dust bag on my shelf because I don't want the dust to start sitting on the um, velvet. And so because it's in its dust bag, I don't see it as often. So only when I remember, then I will pick this bag up. I usually have to plan my outfit around this handbag rather than the handbag matching my outfit. And I do prefer for a handbag to match my outfit. I also don't like that the straps dent the suede and you've really got to like push into it to get rid of it so that happens often and it's kind of, I just find it kind of annoying and I think I should have bought the smaller size really this is too big for me the strap is also too long again it's not adjustable but you can make it a shoulder strap like that but I don't know I just I think I made a big mistake with this bag and I don't think it's the marmot line I do love my mini bag. I think it's just this material color size just didn't work for me. And I think I should have really looked at the bag and tried it on properly before going for this. Another favorite purchase of mine is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs backpack in the PM size. So this is the middle size. I love this bag so much. It was such a mission for me to get this. If you have watched my luxury items I thought I'd never buy tag video, you'll know that I went to a little bit of trouble to get this bag. Initially though, I wasn't I wasn't in love with it because of the straps. I was like, that's really bulky looking and I don't know if I really like that, but I, I bought it anyways and I love it. This strap is so light and it's so comfy to use when you're traveling. It doesn't dent in your shoulder like some of my other bags straps do and it's just comfy, it's light, it's easy to 
pair with clothes. It fits a bunch of stuff. It even fits my large ring agenda, which I love. Um, the zipper pulls, a lot of people say it's hard to um, open and shut, but I don't have that problem with mine at all. Mine is from when the bag first ever came out, so I don't know if they've changed anything or what. And it's softened over time, and I really like that soft um, look. Because it's so soft, it makes it really nice to carry around, and you don't... Um, it doesn't get too heavy. Even when I put a bunch of stuff, it doesn't get heavy. This is my number one go-to for traveling. I have taken it on so many different destinations and I really love it. It is my favorite backpack and I would have to go as far as saying it's my favorite Louis Vuitton handbag. And I just, I really love it and I would not trade it. And this would probably be one item that I would probably never sell for my collection because it's just so classic. And I love that it's got the black leather detail. Oh, yeah. Another handbag purchase that didn't work for me was this Miu Miu handbag. I, I can't find this online anymore and I don't know the name of this bag. I purchased this in Hong Kong at the airport duty free. It was literally like a split second decision. I hadn't ever looked at this bag or researched it. I think I've used this like once and it's because it does not fit much at all. So it's got two zippers here and they're two separate compartments. So each compartment is really small and does not fit anything. Like I can't, I can just fit a phone and a card holder in here really. So it's more like a clutch that you take out at night, but I'm not really a big nighttime going out person so I don't get the use of a clutch as much. It does come with a crossbody strip as well but because I can't really fit anything I don't really use it that much. I think if it had just one zip and this whole thing was just one compartment it would have been so much better. It is a pretty bag. I use it for decor now on my um, bedside table because it is so pretty and I like the colour. I just wish it was more functional and not just pretty. My best shoe purchase is again from Gucci. I have a lot of hits and misses with Gucci, I think. And it is these here. These are the Gucci Marmont heels. I think that's what they're called. But they are—they have got the Marmont Gigi logo there. And it's got a thick block heel, which I love. That is what I love about this shoe, is a thick block heel, because it makes it so comfortable to wear. I wear this a ton, because it, it elevates my look and makes me look taller without giving me the pain that heels usually give me. So I'm so happy with this purchase. I want to buy it in more colours, but there has, just hasn't been a colour that I've loved. And black goes with everything, so it was a good choice, I think, in buying black. I'm not kidding when I say this. I have walked through Melbourne City and they're just so comfortable to wear. My feet don't get sore and it's all thanks to that block heel and the strap here is a little bit thicker so it does, it's not uncomfortable in the front of the foot. So for sure my best heel purchase I would say. Now the next luxury worst purchase item is an item that I have seen in countless amounts of videos. But when I purchased it, I was not watching YouTube videos and there weren't as many YouTube videos going around because I would not have purchased it if I had watched those videos. It is the Christian Louboutin Pigalle heels. I've got it in the 100 centimeter heel and it's in the patent leather with the red bottom and I have got it protected, which I really wish I did not do because they did such a bad job. I have never worn these heels out ever. That's why I can touch the bottom of them. They are just so uncomfortable. It's when people say they're comfortable, I'm like, can I please have your feet? Because they look so stunning on, but you just, you can't. I will put this on and walk from my bedroom to the kitchen, which is like one meter and my feet will be sore. So what had happened with these shoes though is that I went to the Louis Vuitton um, concession that had just opened up and I was like, I really want to get these shoes. And so sales consultant was showing me, I'd never been to a Louis Vuitton store before because I, it was really hard to find. And so she's telling me everything and she's like, I would totally suggest you go half a size down because they're going to stretch and they're going to get too big. So I was like, okay, okay. So I tried them on, I was like, yeah, this one's tighter. So it's probably going to stretch and be easier to wear. I should not have done that because I can't even wear it to stretch it out because my feet are in that much pain. I should have gone a size up. If anything, I would totally recommend you buy sizes up. I have never even gone to Louis Vuitton again because I do not want to go through the pain of wearing them. Now, my sister, she loves them. She doesn't think they're super comfortable, but she doesn't find them as painful as I do. And I think it's because I went for the half size down, but I'm just like, I, I don't want to spend my money on those shoes. I'll find something else. But they are so beautiful. And again, I just use this for decor. 
cool because it's such a beautiful shoe. I should really sell it, but I think I'm so, like, look at how stunning that looks just from the side. Like, I think I'd be really sad to sell it, and I wish I could wear it. Like, I wish I could wear it. It's so beautiful, but I just can't, so that goes into the worst luxury purchase section. So the next category is accessories, and it is the Louis Vuitton large ring agenda. I love this item, and I was really apprehensive about buying it at the beginning. If you've watched my luxury items I never thought I'd buy a video, you'll know why. It's been such a good purchase because I use this every single day. I just get yearly inserts every year. I've had it for about three or four years and I've used it every year pretty much every single day and I love it so much. It keeps me on track. It keeps me motivated because I love to tick lists off. I'm a huge planner so it's just been such a great purchase and I think in terms of cost per wear it's one of the best because I use it every day so it's probably down to a really low number by now so I'm so happy I have this. Never sell this one, this is my favorite. I do have a few other agendas. It started a very bad craze of agendas, but this will always be my favorite and the one that I find most functional, easiest to use, and I just really love it. It is the biggest size though, so I don't always carry it around, but I do use it every day. Now, in terms of accessories, luxury purchases that weren't so good is more of a category and it's bag charms. I went through a phase of buying <laughs> tons of bag charms and they were just a waste of money, I think. More so these Bear Charms. These are from Burberry and they're the Thomas Bear Charms. I just feel like they're a little bit childish on some of my bags. And so it's really cute though. Like I do still style them on my bags. I think they work with some bags more than the others. But I don't know. They weren't cheap either. They were like $250 each. So I don't know. I don't put them on my bags as much anymore. They kind of sit in my cupboard. So it's... I would say it's a worse purchase. It's still really cute. Like when I look at it now, I think it's really cute, but I just don't use it as much. Even these Louis Vuitton ones, I love to collect it. It's more like a little collecting thing that I was doing. I don't do it anymore because it's just, again, it just sits down. I, I really want to use my items, not just have it for decor purposes or just sitting in my cupboard just to look pretty. But I was collecting all these ones and I do use them actually. I use them mostly on my backpack because the backpack is pretty plain. I feel like adding one of these gives it a little special touch. But it's still, I think, more so these Thomas Bear Burberry charms are a luxury purchase I probably could have done without. Sure my best clothing luxury purchase for sure has to be my Burberry trench. There's no doubt about it that it's my Burberry trench. I have used this so much since I got it. No, so much up in Queensland, but when I go to colder places, like um, we always used to go to America for Christmas and it's colder in America, so I would get a lot of use out of this. And when I go to Melbourne all the time, I get to wear this more there too. So it's definitely great in terms of cost per wear. It's more of a casual style, which matches my style quite nicely. It's really good because it's got this interior lining that's actually removable. So if you go somewhere colder, you put this interior lining in and it will keep you warmer. And if you're going somewhere that's going to be a bit cold, but not super cold, you can take that off and just have it as a, as a trench. And it's also got a hoodie that's removable. So it's actually really functional and really there's quite a lot where you can wear them in places that aren't super cold either. So really love this trench and you would have seen it a ton on my Instagram if you follow me because I wear it a lot. So definitely best purchase and I purchased this for like 500 US dollars and Burberry trenches are really expensive. It is from Burberry Brit though and Burberry Brit was the, I think there was three levels like Burberry Brit Burberry and then Burberry, Burberry something else that I can't remember but that was more like the runway pieces. I don't think they do that anymore, actually. I haven't seen that differentiation on the website. Still, I think $500 was definitely worth my money. Now, a luxury clothing purchase that was probably a bit silly. It was definitely on a whim, and it is this Christian Dior t-shirt. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it says Jardy or there in beads, and it's got the number eight. So it was just the full black version of the Jardy or t-shirt that came out ages ago and on the back it's just say CD with the B on there. I bought this on a whim. There was this huge um, thing about not being able to purchase these t-shirts unless you purchased other items. It was really hard to get your hands on a Dior t-shirt and I went to the Melbourne store and the lady's like, are you interested in the t-shirts? I'm like, yes, do you have them? And so like I tried on a bunch of different things and I just really liked this because it was Dior but it wasn't flashy Dior. 
and uh, I just I don't wear it because I feel like it's so delicate like I'm so worried about the beads falling off even though I don't think it would I just get nervous wearing it because it's so delicate and I paid a hefty price tag for this t-shirt which I will never do again but I just I don't know I just don't wear it so it's definitely a worst luxury clothing purchase than a best purely because of how much I don't wear it but it's so pretty I just I, I really wish that I didn't buy it though all the items that I showed that were my worst luxury purchases were purchases that weren't on my wish list and were kind of things bought on a whim so I would definitely say if you're into luxury items do your research make a wish list and buy things off your wish list like I know things that seem cheaper on sale can be very tempting but I would totally suggest having a wish list Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed my best and worst luxury purchases. Let me know what your best and worst luxury purchases or purchases in general were in the comments below. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.